Hey everybody, Thomas here, and today this is going to be an interesting video. We're going to go over things that are bound to happen when you first get a sawmill with setworks. You're probably going to screw up and you're going to make some stupid mistakes and everything, but what separates, you know, smart people from idiots is whether or not you learn from your mistakes. I've already made these mistakes and everything, but I'm going to see if I can help you out so you don't look like an idiot and you'll have a great plan for when you actually make one of these mistakes and you don't ruin something like a blade, get your mill out of alignment, destroy a cut on a log, all sorts of stuff like that. So what we're going to talk about is the, these set works and these set works are awesome, but once you first get them and you'll be learning and everything, you'll, you're going to make some mistakes. And the auto saw up and auto saw down are some great features, but it is a computer and it is only as smart as the input that goes into it and if you don't know what you're doing then it will make the mistake for you <laughs> so again it's it will not it will not help you any which way or at all if you put bad data in you're gonna get bad data out so here we go so right now i've got the blade height set at 22 and an eighth inch there so we just set return there now the mill is not on right now i just want to be able to do this where you can hear me talking we're gonna go through a few, say, scenarios. Say you're cutting through the log, and you think you're all the way through the log, but in actuality you weren't, and for some reason the blade you know, may have changed pitch or something. Well, you think you're through it, and you're gonna hit auto up. Then you're gonna realize, oh crap, I'm still the log. What am I gonna do? Then you hit auto down. Oh crap, I went too far. What am I gonna do? I wanna show you what you can do if you ever get into a situation like this so you don't really tear up your machine. You're gonna mess up some stuff, but it won't be that bad if you can if you can correct it quickly. Let's go and turn this on. All right, so again, we've already set return. If you check out my other videos where I go over the set work, so they'll show you all about that. So say we're cutting into the log, you know, we go down, we're doing two inch scales and everything, you're going through. So you're on your second cut in, and you're, and you're cutting down the log, you think you're all the way through it, you hit auto up. Oh crap, I'm not through it. So you hit auto down. Oh crap, it's gonna go to the next one. You hit auto up. Oh my goodness, it's gonna continue going through and you get into this weird thing, you're trying to stop it. Just turn it off. If you just turn that off, it will actually reset, go to a blank screen, and you won't be playing this game trying to figure out what do I do. So even if you, let's see, we'll set return. And you do Let's set this to you know, four inches down. So auto saw down and I try to, you know, I'm holding my lever right here. I let go and it still goes down. <clears throat> Let's see if you can see that again. So if we go auto saw down, it's gonna go down four inches. But if I screw up, if you, if you hit your lever right here, it will hold it right there. It's trying to go, but as soon as I let this lever go, it will continue going down that four inches. So you really can't stop. Once you hit auto saw up or auto saw down, it's going to complete the cycle. It doesn't know any better. It just knows you told me to go four inches down. I'm going to go four inches down. And if you go auto saw up, you can, you can, you can stop it by holding the lever back. But as soon as you let go, it's going to continue to go up. So again, if now let's try this. I haven't tried this one before. So I'm going to set return, I'm going to go down six inches, auto saw it down, but I'm going to try to stop it with a manual button. That did stop it, so that's good to know. So if I go auto saw down, manual up, we'll stop it where it's at. Now you'll get a, a slight up, it will not complete the cycle. That's probably because you're sending a whole new electronic signal. Now if I was to use my lever, again, <clears throat> we already saw this. Let's set return here. We already saw it. If I was to use a lever and I hold the lever forward, it'll still complete that cycle. But we just showed if I do auto, if I do manual up, it will stop it. So let's let's try that. Auto down, manual up, it stops it. That's a good no. Let's try another thing. So let's say you set return, you're cutting through it, and you do a weird for some reason. Let's go six inches down set return that does nothing so that's good to know nothing happens there 
we go again, set return six inches down. If we want to really stop it, turn it off. That's another great way. And it's probably easier to, to turn off than trying to hit the manual saw up or manual saw down. <clears throat> Let's try another one. Let's try, we'll set the return, we'll go six inches down, and then I'll hit manual saw down. Let's see what that does. Set return, auto saw down, manual down. It still stopped it right there. So by doing another set of commands up or down, we'll stop it if you're using the control panel. It will not stop it if you're using the actual uh, levers right here. So that's pretty cool. And we already showed that if you set return in the action, so set return, moving down six inches, and you set return, ah, you set return again, it will not stop it. So that's just interesting to know. Now I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, the, the on off switch is a great way to clear out if you have anything stored in the queue uh, it'll just clear it but now we also know that that'll do it and that the actual levers will stop it so that's good to know now one of the things that happened to me a few months back was i kept on getting this weird thing where i would hit auto saw down and the head wouldn't do anything and hit it down auto saw down again it would do it again well what I mean, it would do it again, it, it would do it times two. So it, it didn't get the first command, but it got the second command. And what I found out is this connection right here, and you can see there's sawdust built up around it. I was cutting a lot of cedar. What I actually had was I had sawdust that got into this connection port right here and caused it to, you know, not make connections. And it would make intermittent connections. And when it finally got the connection it was supposed to get, it's like, hey, you told me to go down twice. So it went down twice. That was kind of scary, but again, if you get into a situation like that where it's acting funky, check these two inputs right here on the solenoid valve. Uh, you might find out some interesting stuff there if you have sawdust in there. Just blow it out real quick. But, you know, <laughs> this set works again, is a great tool, and I use it every single day on the sawmill. When I first got this sawmill, I wasn't sure how much I was going to use these set works or anything, but in, in actuality, I use these things all the time. Um, it's very simple to use, I like the screen. We've gone over some of the things. If you go to F2 and you set your return, it'll do from that point where you set the return and measure down. If you're in normal mode and you go through, you set whatever, you know, use whatever preset you want to do. Or if you want to adjust that, again, if it's in yellow, it'll show. <clears throat> that means that you're not on your preset, you're off your preset. But if you want to change your preset, you just go into there and change it and hit OK. And each of your cuts will be an inch and a quarter. So the computer is great. But again, if you get into a weird situation and you're hitting a button and it doesn't do what you want, so you hit another button, it'll continue to cycle unless you clear it with one of these two buttons right here or you turn it off. So just remember, also the other thing you got to think about, right now I've got a blade on there. It's been sharpened a lot. And I, I've already blown up one blade today. I'm, I'm really getting towards the end of some of my blades. If you do get into a situation where you blow a blade, you know, you got to know you're controlling functions move my camera here sorry so my controlling functions are first things first if i blow a blade i want to well there's two things <laughs> if you first blow a blade you want to make sure you let off the any direction of the mill stop with the mill where it's at and then turn your clutch off if you continued to go forward with a broken blade then that blade was going to get stuck up, up there in your rollers and everything and then it can bind up on the drive belts, on the drive wheels, all sorts of stuff. But you also want to kill power to your drive wheels by turning the clutch off. That's very, very crucial. And your first, your first blade blow up you ever have, I mean, you're going to notice it. And it still, to this day, it will make me jump. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's nothing like a blade blow up to uh, wake you up in the morning. It just, it's a fact of life. It's going to happen. It's going to happen more so on a hydraulic mill than it would a manual mill. Sorry, I didn't know where to put the camera. I'm like all over the place. Where do I put the silly camera? So, blade blow ups, they happen. And when you start getting into a log, say, you know, or a blade that's been sharpened five or six times, it, it's going to happen. You're getting towards the end. And I can typically hear, I'll hear something change. There'll be a total change in the blade. Uh, just something doesn't sound right. And I'm like, yeah. Let me do one more cut. Let me do one more. And it's usually pretty stupid. Now, the other thing, what you can do, if you take the blade off in the log, so take the blade off in the log, 
move the saw head back. Don't move it up or down. Keep it where it's at. Put a new blade on and then continue your cut again. You may get some paper thin stuff that goes off with it, but I just did it today on some poplar. My next cut went directly into where it was. You couldn't even tell. You could see a, a slight mark where it went from the first blade to the new blade. There's a slight difference there. It just made a slight transition. But if you can not move your head up and down and remove the, the blade in the log and just bring it back, that's, that's the best thing to do. And then continue that cut again. Also, if you know maybe you blew up that blade because there's something in there, probably shouldn't do that cut again. Uh, in this case, I knew that blade was getting pretty old. I was literally two cuts away from finishing and I was like, come on, just one more, just do one more cut after this cut and it just didn't make it. But it's all right, it's, that's part of it. And then and Mr. Robert is so awesome. Uh, as you can see, I've got a, a stack of blades right there. Yeah, he's, he's really helped me out. And in fact, I've got, a, this is a six degree blade right here. He's sharpened for me. Uh, I've got a video. I had started on that and I don't know why I never finished it. I was showing the difference, difference between a six degree and an eight degree and what I found doing some speed runs, doing some sawdust accumulations uh, to see which one and, and try to figure out what would be the application for each. I need to run a four degree blade as well. But that's that's something I'm gonna work on in the future and kind of show uh, some blade comparisons. And I might look at some different blade manufacturers and see if we can do kind of, kind of some kind of shoot off of blades. So uh, please like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's a lot going on. This is kind of like a little filler video because I know some people have had questions about set works and I know there's a lot of people getting set works for the first time who've never operated a mill that's like this. These are just some tips and tricks uh, to prevent you from making some very horrible mistakes. I'm not gonna lie. I, I one time when my buddy Jack was here, we were messing with the alignment on the mill. I don't know what happened. I was in the mill or in the log and I hit the auto saw up and I'm not going to kidding you. I'm not kidding you. It was a 12 by 12 cant of pine, probably about nine or 10 foot long. It lifted the back end of the log up and then I hit auto saw down. I'm like, what am I doing? And then it went down. I'm like, ah, oh. then I finally turned it off. So I'm like, I made two mistakes really quick because I, I don't know. I panicked. It's not, not like me to panic, but I panicked. So I prepared myself, I know what to do now. I can hit the off button or I can hit one of the other uh, manual up or down buttons to essentially cancel. But if I got into a really hairy situation, you can hold your position with the lever and then hit the off button. But uh, if you get into a situation like that, and you will, um, something's gonna happen in some way, shape or form, you will get some weird situation arise and you might make some stupid mistake like I did. But I'm kind of giving you a heads up. If that happens, on off button works like a charm. It'll stop it every time. So yeah, please like and subscribe. Lots coming around. We'll see you folks. Have a good one.